Friends and members of Laley Presbyterian Church, this is Friday as we get ready leading up to Palm Sunday. I um, want to bring you a devotion for uh, today. And today I've chosen a passage from the beginning of chapter 11 of the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of this word. This current crisis has given plenty of time to stop and to think. And for me, part of that thinking has been about prayer and about what we pray for in the midst of this kind of crisis and, and how we pray. I thought back to this story of Jesus praying and then his disciples asking him uh, how to pray and him teaching about uh, what we now call the Lord's Prayer. Years ago, uh, when I was the pastor of a church in eastern Pennsylvania, uh, we had a Indian pastor come to visit us, and he was um, a very handsome, good-looking man, uh, Salim Sharif. He had been pastor of one of the churches in India's capital, Delhi, and he was known as someone who had a particular affinity for understanding prayer and spirituality. And he had done a number of workshops around India and around the world and in the United States. And we had a chance to invite him to come to our church and give a series of programs in, in the evening about how we could pray. I was struck by the fact that he did not have a lot of tried and true formulas for us to use and that he encouraged us to think about praying being as much listening as it is speaking. He talked about how one would go about finding a way to pray for oneself or by oneself. And he suggested that we should go and we should sit in a chair that is facing east and we should have our feet together and our hands clasped in our uh, laps and our faces raised up towards heaven. And, and then he stopped. And he said, actually, none of that makes any difference. But what you do want to find, because it may prove help for you, helpful for you, is as a place where you feel comfortable praying might be some part of your house or some, some other place, and go to that place again and again in prayer. Find a posture that works for you. Um, for my father, it was always sitting on a chair and leaning forward and holding his, his face sort of in his hands and then, then praying in quiet. He said, have not just a stance that works for you, but have some words that work for you, some reading of scripture or something that calls you into prayer. Because he said what we are trying to do here is not to 
do some kind of magic that lets or encourages God to give us whatever it is we want. We are trying to enter in to a relationship with God, and we are trying to put ourselves in a frame of mind and frame of spirit and frame of heart and body that lets us be open to God's presence within and surrounding us. I was always struck by what he said because it seemed to work for me that I, I found that I pray best perhaps when I'm seated at a, seated at a chair like this and have a table in front of me on which a Bible can rest and where I am actually not looking out at anything that is too fantastic or beautiful, but that looking at something that lets me concentrate and be still. He also taught us that we should start with thanksgiving in our prayer, that we should continue with praise for the goodness and greatness of God, that we should not be afraid to lift up our petitions to God, but we should also always pray for other people and pray for them first before we pray for ourselves. We should let our words be gentle words, gentle both with others and with us, but committed words because we are in a relationship with the God whose covenant is forever. We should remember that when we approach and talk with God, we are approaching someone whom Jesus called Abba, Father, an endearment, a term of endearment, and yet also we are talking to the creator of the world and of life itself. So we come in prayer in a season like this, at a time like this, and, and seek a place because in this time of this trouble when we're ordered to stay at home, we have the time to learn again how to pray. So I would ask you to pray with me now. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of days in which we can take time and learn again to pray to you, which we can learn to express our praise, our gratitude, our honor, our glory to you for all that you are and all that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord that you can be present with us, even and sometimes especially in, in silence when we are not speaking. We thank you, Lord, that we can lift up our petitions before you, and we thank you that we can pray for those about whom we are concerned whether that be a good concern because they're people we love or it's a negative concern because they are people we fear. But we can raise them all up before you, O Lord, and ask that you would bless them and give each of them what they truly need. And we pray for ourselves, O Lord. We pray for ourselves in these days when we don't know whether the person near us is dangerous because of disease or whether we ourselves are dangerous to others. And so we keep our distance and we follow the rules as they're laid out to us. But we ask mostly, O oh Lord, that in the power of your grace, those who need to find the solutions and treatments will do so. And that those who must give care and endanger themselves in the midst of all of this might be kept safe to the maximum extent possible. And help us all, O oh Lord, be kind to one another. And let your church be a voice and a witness to your people around the world that you are present 
and that you care deeply. And we are not walking this path alone. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.